Hey, soil peeps. Uh, welcome to my organized chaos. This is my little table that I have in my home where I do all my gardening stuff. I get my seeds together, see all my seed boxes. And I just sit here and I think and I organize stuff. I have seeds that I trade, seeds that I give away, all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's just my little, my little spot in my home. So anyway, so this video, I wanted to talk about winter sowing. Some of you may know about it, some of you may not know about it. So I'm just gonna show you some containers that I've been saving up, all kinds of stuff. So at church, cause I love the Lord, they have these little cookie containers for kids. When you know the winter sowing, it has to be something you can see through. So if you stick your hand in it and you can see your hand, that's what you want to use. You do not want to use anything that will block the sunlight. Well, you're saying, I thought winter sowing you had to use milk jugs. Well, not just milk jugs, juice jugs, soda bottles, all kinds of stuff. So the modification that you would use for something that had a big mount like this, you would take the top. And if you see, I've already drawn a circle on it. So I'm going to cut that circle out right there because you got to have a way for water to come in, but not so big where the condensation is gonna come out. The other important thing is that you drill holes in the bottom for drainage. We haven't done that yet. Just showing you the container. So this is a cookie container, and I'm gonna grow stuff in here that I know is gonna grow really tall, and stuff that I know I'm gonna grow a lot of, like tomatoes, I love tomatoes. So this is one container. This is a vinegar container. See, it's nice and tall. Well, you can use this again. Can we see our finger through that? Yep. And I've used these in a bunch of different ways, but make sure you rinse it out. Um, make sure you rinse out everything, your, your, all your containers. Everybody uh, is not fortunate to have a greenhouse. That's a goal I have, but that doesn't start stop you from starting your plants early. So here, these are some strawberry containers. They already have holes in the bottom. You always want to check and holes around the top. I had a lot of success using these last year. So my grandkids like fruit, all kind of fruit. And make sure that the container is um, going to accommodate the seed that you're growing. Now you don't want to put tomato seeds in here because this is not going to be big enough. But last year I grew coxcombs. My coxcombs got to four feet, but the seedlings were only like a couple of inches tall. So you want to make sure you read your seed packet, know, know what you get into so you don't have to do a lot of um, a potty. So more, more strawberry containers, and these are lettuce containers. So again, you want to make sure you put some holes in the bottom, you put some ventilation holes in the top because the water has to get, you have to get water in it. Um, let's see what else we have here. I've been saving, honey. So here, spinach. This is a spinach bowl. Same thing. Always got to have holes at the bottom for drainage, and you got to have holes in the top. So this is my drill that I usually use. So I have a really big fat drill hole so that I can put nice size holes in it. And that's usually what I use. And then, of course, I have soda bottles. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I have milk bottles, juice bottles, soda bottles. And I do something called direct sowing. So with the direct sowing, the direct winter sowing, I will take my containers like this and I will cut the bottom out of it. And I'll save the top. And what I'll do is last year, I'll post a picture of what I did last year. You know, I, I recycle my kitty litter bottles. So we do uh, wicking pots. We put bottles and stuff in the bottom. We have one drain hole and we water through a PVC pipe. Well, what I did last year is I grew some peppers and I actually sowed the pepper in the soil and I put the bottle on top, of course, with the bottom out and it's served as a cloach. So the cloach kept the temperature warm. When the seed got ready to germinate, it germinated. Now the part, the difference between direct sowing and just regular winter sowing, winter sowing, you would not keep the top on because you gotta let water in it. But with direct winter sowing, whether you're doing it in ground in the garden or you're doing it in pots, you wanna keep your top 
The reason being is when the temperature should drop and get really low, you want to take and put the top on it because the top will keep the heat in there and will keep your little seedling from, um, you know, being destroyed. So you want to hold on to the tops. And what you can do is, um, I saw somebody had a great idea. You can take um, a piece of string and kind of tie it to the side. Or what I used to do is I just stick it in the soil next to the pot so that I can monitor the weather. And that might be a little bit much for you to do, but it was a fun experiment for me and it actually works. And I plan on growing some more things just like that. And all of my bottles, um, I either do winter sowing or direct winter sowing. So I keep a lot of my bottles for cloches. Um, it helps with a lot of things. We had, you know, our weather last year, we had these pop-up um, dips in the weather and everybody was scurrying trying to cover their plants because we planted uh, what is the second week in uh, April and it got we got a cold snap. Well, they said plan after Mother's Day. I'm too impatient for that. So I make sure I keep some of my bottles, cut the bottoms out and have cloches so that I can just cover my stuff up. Now, the other thing that I wanna discuss with winter sowing is you may want to, if you have slugs in your area or you have different bugs that's, that's gonna go in your container and eat up your plants, it's always good to put a little um, netting, like little cheap netting, dollar store netting over the top. That way the air and the water can still get in it, but the bugs can't get in it to eat it up. Now, if you have something in your soil already, that's different. But I'm talking about stuff that will crawl in your container. And yes, I had that last year. I was like, where are these bugs going? Trying to eat up my stuff. I'm trying to grow this for me. I'm not trying to grow this for them. But anyway, that's just a, a little word of caution. So I'm going to take you in the yard in a minute. And um, I'm going to get these holes drilled in these containers. And I'll show you what I did. And I'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, we're outside in the yard. Thank God for 50 degree weather. And if I didn't ask you, why don't you click like, subscribe, and at the end of the video, leave me a comment. Maybe you have a different way that you win or so. Maybe you have some hacks that maybe the rest of us could use. Share it. I mean, like I said, this is not a one size fits all situation, but you know, we all stand to learn from one another. So I'm just gonna show you some things that I do, and I'm gonna take you down uh, to the plants. The, well, the stuff that we're planting. So here, this is typically what you would do. If you have a container like this, you're gonna cut it and you're gonna leave it attached, maybe about an inch or so, okay? Uh, one thing I did learn that if you don't cut it right, when you get ready to harvest your plants and say they've grown up into the container, it's very hard to get them out if you don't have this uh, opening where it's hanging open like this because I, I think I didn't cut a couple of them right and it just kept springing back springing back so you want to make sure you um you cut it and you leave just like an inch and make sure that it's hanging like that so you are going to put your flower type or whatever you're sowing you're going to mark it on the jug and you're going to also mark it inside the jug why because sometimes the the rain and the sun and everything it fades everything do not use a permanent marker you want to get a paint pen or a wax pen and these were at michael's i bought this they're two in a pack for just a few dollars now something else i used last year was fingernail polish if you have a steady hand you can do that some people will mark their jugs with numbers if you're a very organized person you can put this as jug number one and then you can put a in on a tablet that in jug number one we have this that the other plants so this is what you want to do drain holes in the bottom remember you want to have a ventilation hole at the top you don't have to that's not a must have and then you want to have a marker in here just in case this fades out and you want to put at least four inches of soil in it so that your plant has enough um soil to grow in now so far as the soil that you use i use just regular potting soil um some people are sticklers for using um a particular brand you just want to make sure that it's a medium that your plants can grow in you can do a males mix the perlite uh peat moss and compost you know try different things and see what works for you so make sure you have four inches now this is what i do some people do it differently i will water my soil first and then plant my seeds in so I got my little watering can, got a little rain water in here. So I'm gonna wet this first, okay? All right, so it's nice and moist. 
and I'm doing perennial seeds because this is the beginning of the year and a lot of the perennials need cold stratification. That's when they have to go through a, a period of uh, cold. Some people put it in the refrigerator or the freezer and mock it, but I'm just choosing to do this. So in this one, we're doing a Paradise Mix Echinacea. Um, got these seeds from a seed trade and I'm just gonna poke a little hole in it with my finger. Okay, I don't even know how many seeds is in this container. Now some seeds like lettuce, you can just sprinkle it over the top. Okay, come on seeds, out the packet. Okay, all right, and we're gonna get those planted. These are how the seeds look. And I have a bunch of different echinaceas, but I just want to try this because I think I have yellow and pink. So I'm gonna just throw those in there. So you plant just like you would plant in the garden. It's not not much different i think i got some more in there hold on i'm just gonna blindly do it so you cover your seeds your soil is already moistened and then what you do is you close it up now see this seal is really nice but if you want to get a tighter seal what you can do is put masking tape all around the sides okay um and then the same for here so we're gonna do some drumstick flowers well what i've done is I have shared some of the seeds, but when I saw these, I was like, oh, these things are beautiful. So they'll be good for a cut garden. So I'm gonna grow some of these. And what I'm gonna show you also is how I put the netting across the top of my containers. Now, if you don't need that, you don't have to do it. It's not a must have, but it's more so if you know you have a slug problem in your garden. Okay, that's my seeds. And these, I don't have to sew really deep. I'm just gonna use the bottom of my pen and just gonna sew them really lightly. And what I like to do is once I put the seed in, and you might not be all this organized, you might just sprinkle. Like, girl, ain't nobody got time for all that. We just gonna sprinkle them seeds. We gonna go about our business. Well, look what I'll do. I'll do the last few like that, okay? I always sow more than what I need. I do trade plants. I like to give away plants. I have two plant trades that I do every year with two groups, my master gardener group, and uh, I have a local group. So you get them planted and some people do different things. They will secure it with a piece of wire or they will, they will take it and tuck it inside. All right, so you have your duct tape. Some people use painter's tape. Some people use packaging tape. Um, if it works for you, use it, but I prefer duct tape because it's stickier and like, you know, it's gonna be out in the elements. So you want something that works. You don't want your stuff to come loose. Um, you know, so I use duct tape. And for a container like this, I would just seal up the sides. Now, if you wanna wrap it all the way around, you can do that or you can do little strips of tape. So I'm just gonna put it like this because what I'm trying to do is Seal the container as much as I can so that I can keep condensation in it. Make sure that you are checking your containers weekly. Um, a lot of times people fail at winter sowing um, because we're all in different zones. I'm in 7A, 7B, I'm sorry. And some people are in warmer climates, some are in climates where it gets a lot of snow. And I mean, if it snows, you might, you know, you might not need to check them as much, but just be a little, uh, diligent about checking them at least once a week because you want to make sure that there's condensation in the top of your container if you do not see the condensation in the top of your container your soil may be dried out and what what i do is i will get a container of water let me show you what i use i get some oil pans from the dollar tree oh, i'm just show you so this is my oil pan it's not the cleanest because it's out in the uh, yard and I put water in it and what I'll do to water just take my container I set it in the container of water I let it wick up the bottom and water my, my jugs or my containers so the same thing with this one we're gonna seal up the container with duct tape and then I'm gonna show you what I do with the stuff on top to keep the bugs the slugs out if you have a slug issue like I said you can do a strip of tape I like to seal the whole off. So, let's see. Start right there. And you can, sometimes it's easy just to take little pieces. Because if you're doing it by yourself, which I'll have some help. My grandson loves to do stuff like this. 
oh we ran out but anyway that's okay so it's sealed up like this i'll get some more tape the purpose of this is for demonstration now these are the tools that you would buy from dollar tree if you go in the wedding section they have the little two rounds this is all you would need so you set that on top of your bottle like that and in order to secure it i just purchased some um uh, this is the wire that you would use to um hang your, your uh, pictures up not easy that as easy to cut but let's see we're gonna we're gonna get it done okay here we go so you want to take your tool you want to put it over now if you have like some old uh baggy ties or something like that you can use that you know i'm all about recycling and twist it down tight hold on I'm showing bloopers and everything. Okay, so hold it down. And you want to secure it. And that way, you form a uh, a covering for your, your jugs. Because I, I've heard of people having problems where, you know, they had a good season, their stuff is growing, and just as they get ready to open their, their jugs, because now it's the springtime, they've gone, the slugs have gone in it and eaten them up. So you see that? It lets water in and air in, but it keeps those slugs out. Now, if your holes are really big, you may want to make smaller holes, but this is what I do. That's just one of my hacks. Okay, well, if you got any questions about winter sowing or if you have any hacks that you can share, leave them in the comments. All right, I hope you enjoyed the winter sewing demonstration. If you have any comments, please leave them in the uh, comments below. If you have any hacks or uh, any ideas of different things that you can do, just let us know. I mean, we're all learning and we're all growing. You know, gardening is not a one size fit all thing. It's never one way to do it. There's always multiple ways. And just as a gardener, I've learned the most, the most that you learn, you don't have to learn everything from experience. But you can learn some things from experience and some things just from listening to other people. So thank you again for coming in to the Garden of Deaton page. Don't forget to look, up, look us up on Facebook. We're on Facebook, Garden of Deaton Facebook group. Um, we're gardeners, plant mamas, um, just getting together, sharing information, sharing assistance to one another. And, um, you know, just, just a community of, of like-minded gardeners. So again, thank you so much for staying, um, for visiting our channel. Uh, peace out, my friends. Bye-bye. You already got condensation built, and this is what you want to look. This is golden. All right. Peace out, soil peeps.